Alright, we're leaving Japan on our way to our next destination, and I'm pretty excited. You know, we probably shouldn't be outside, and especially traveling right now. You know what man, you're 100% right. For those watching, please do not do what we're doing. Stay home. Wash your hands, and, and save, save lives. lives. It's really, really that easy. Dude, we're supposed to be in sync. Welcome to the white sand beaches of La Repubblica Dominicana. Based off of our last road trip video, the Dominican Republic had a few fans interested in seeing the history of baseball in the country. Yeah. Just a handful. Because of this, we decided to venture into the Caribbean to give you a bird's eye view of the country and what it has to offer to the rest of the baseball world. I will be your first tour guide, Zach, eventually handing you off to Matt halfway through our journey. Now please, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you keep your head, hands, and feet inside of the vehicle at all times, and please, no flash photography. Instead of a nice hotel or tour site, we begin our journey with a discussion about a single word. Blood. Maybe not exactly blood. But here's the buzzword of the day, la sangre. If anybody has made it to the big leagues from the Dominican Republic, you can be sure that everybody believes that they have la sangre. It quite literally means the blood, but to the DR, it means a whole lot more than some red liquid. La sangre is the blood. No, not O negative. If you have la sangre, then you have the blood of baseball. Every baseball player born to be great has the blood in them. They are desired to play the game at the level that those without it simply can't imagine. Baseball here is a borderline religion, so having the game in your blood seems to fit the bill down there. Now, I know I said in our last video that Japan exports some of the world's best baseball players, and while I do stick by that statement, they've got nothing on the DR. To be fair though, no other country in the world has the kind of baseball culture that exists in the Dominican Republic. It's nuts, like anything beyond what I've ever experienced. One of the world's most exciting global sports events is the World Baseball Classic. If you try to convince me otherwise, well... The first point of this game came in the second end. British skip David Murdoch played his first... I'd have to disagree with you. To those that know and love the WBC, you probably already know that the Dominican Republic has provided some of the fiercest competition in the series. While the country only has one gold medal, and it being their only medal, it's still enough to make it the second most successful country in the tournament's history. Two of the greatest World Baseball Classic games ever had the DR playing in it. In 2013, Italy faced off against the Dominican Republic. In the first inning, Italy scored four runs, and you would think the early rally would really shatter the morale of the DR. Right? <laughs> now one of my absolute favorite things in sports is a loud crowd. There is nothing more exciting than the energy of a loud crowd in a big game. Now I thought I've seen my fair share of loud crowds, like when Syndergaard made Alcides Escobar look like a fool in Game 3 of the 2015 World Series. <laughs> or when Edwin Encarnacion caused an earthquake in Toronto back in 2016. Please. But the one thing those two games have in common is that they were sold out playoff games. I want you to take a look at the game's attendance. See that? Yeah, yeah. See that? It looks about as packed as if the Pensacola Blue Wahoos were playing against the Montgomery Biscuits. Yet somehow, the Dominican fanbase was able to bring the thunder and make every play sound as if Syndergaard was tossing high and inside on the first pitch. That's going to be a base hit. So the out not recorded. Ends up being a single, and boy, excited at first base. Before he even got to the bag, he started playing. I tip my cap to you, DR. There is truly no greater amount of spirit and love for the game than what all of you are able to bring to a crowd. Wherever you go, you bring with you an unparalleled amount of excitement and enthusiasm that creates an absolutely electric environment for baseball. Beyond the WBC, there are a couple other leagues that are prominent in the Caribbean that the Dominican Republic participates in. One of the most famous is called the Caribbean Series. The tournament is essentially the World Series of Latin America, where various local countries compete against each other. Each country picks a team from their professional leagues, usually the champion of that league, to play in the series. The tournament consists of a 15 game round robin, then the top four teams advance to the semifinals, and then the winners play in the final game of the series. About a month ago, actually, the 2020 series wrapped up, with the Dominican Republic winning the series with a 6-1 record, beating Venezuela by six runs in the final game. Even if you don't watch the full games and you just want to watch the highlights, I couldn't recommend it enough. The intensity of play in the series is just incredible, with some of the best players in the world competing. 
The series is a lot like the WBC, just in a much smaller area of the world. On an even smaller scale of play, the Dominican Republic has a professional league, otherwise abbreviated as, um, Lidum? 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 Uh, whatever it is, it's just the professional series down there. It's played in the winter, and it consists of six teams spread across the Dominican Republic. The league has a 50-game schedule that runs from October to December and concludes with an 18-game postseason. And the championship did not disappoint. Interestingly enough, the teams played a lot more small ball than what you're used to seeing. Just as it is in the WBC, the fans were through the roof again. And in all fairness, yes, it is a championship game. But you couldn't even find this kind of excitement in the World Series back in the States. The first run didn't score until the seventh inning, and even after the long pitcher's duel, the fans didn't miss a beat. It was electric. The fans were out of their seats jumping and screaming, players were hyped up and calling out to the stands, and then there were back to back to back home runs. I can't even describe how nuts this is, just see for yourselves. Valdepin está sacando batazo grande a lo profundo, lo va buscando el guardabosque derecho, la bola, el guardabosque derecho, la bola, le dice adiós. Bueno. Junior Ley al primer lanzamiento está sacando batazo grande a lo profundo, lo va buscando el guardabosque, la bola, el guardabosque, la bola, le dice Palenque, dos son toro. está sacando batazo grande a lo profundo, lo va buscando el guardabosque, la bola, el guardabosque, la bola. The Dominican Republic has definitively earned itself a new fan today. I'll be sure to tune in to the Lydum Championship every year now because this is baseball at its best. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for abiding to the rules for our tour so far. I'm going to hand you over to our next tour guide, Matt, who's going to take you on a deeper dive inside the DR. Thanks, Zach. After you guys got to hear about baseball culture in the country, I want to talk about some other things. Just as we did with Japan, I'd like to talk about some of the country's greatest exports to the major leagues and discuss the relationship between baseball and its influence on socioeconomic factors players face. We've been really blessed with the amount of talent we've gotten to see come out of the country, and that conversation can't be done justice without talking about Pedro Martinez. This three-time Cy Young Award winner had one of the greatest career peaks of any pitcher in the history of baseball. Pedro's early beginnings in the DR were about as humbling as you'd expect. He grew up in a family of eight, living in a house with a tin roof and dirt floors. Pedro and his older brother Ramon lived and breathed baseball, raised not only in a country that treats the sport as religion, but by a father who was a popular pitcher in the 50s. Ramon was signed by Dodger scout Rafael Avila and began training at their facility in his home country. Pedro followed in the footsteps of his older brother and signed with the same agent at age 16. Now I can go on and on about how good Pedro Martinez was, how he was the second pitcher in history at the time to take a perfect game into extra innings in 1995, or how he was one steroid-filled Blue Jay away from winning four consecutive Cy Young Awards in the late 90s, or how he's literally a Hall of Famer, but I won't. We all know how good Pedro was. Nowadays, he still lives in the DR during the offseason and is heavily involved with charity work back home. This, and his historic success on the field, made him one of the most beloved athletes in the country. Albert Pujols is another no-doubt first ballot Hall of Famer, who had his beginnings in the Dominican. Now for the majority of our audience that probably has more experience watching Albert than Pedro, this may hit home for you even more so. Like Pedro, Albert was the son of a popular Dominican-born pitcher, a softball pitcher, but popular no less. He eventually immigrated to the United States at age 16, making a name for himself as one of the greatest hitters of the 21st century. He went from using his own improvised baseball equipment to nine All-Star appearances in his first 10 seasons, National League Rookie of the Year, three-time MVP, and World Champion. He's also the all-time leader in double plays, but we don't talk about that. I got you, Albert. Almost all of baseball's best Dominican-born players had to endure severe economic hardships to get to where they are today. Big Poppy was definitely no exception. The legendary David Ortiz was born in Santo Domingo, but grew up in Haina from age 14. Sincerest apologies if I butchered the pronunciation there. In case you don't already know, this particular location is called the Dominican Chernobyl, and according to the UN, its citizens have the highest level of lead contamination in the world. Ortiz himself has talked about in the past, remembering mountains of batteries some three stories tall located in the city. Some of the things that Ortiz had to witness in front of his own eyes weren't something anyone should ever have to see, let alone at such a young age. Ortiz credits his family for raising him well so he could still come out okay once he fully matured. Going from where he was to a player to be named later once he reached the big leagues to one of the most feared and beloved hitters ever is pretty okay if you ask me. As mentioned before, these economic hardships are all too common for young Dominican-born players, 
and most, if not all, have to improvise their own equipment to even play the game. Branches for bats, a canvas tarp for a glove like Juan Marichal, this kind of thing is common practice. You and I can go to a Dick's Sporting Goods whenever we choose to get the things that we need. These players have a fraction of what we do, and play the game at a level that you and I can't imagine. Now there are of course more legends that I can talk about. Vladimir Guerrero and Adrian Beltre, just to name a couple. But I want to shift gears and talk about the journey that they and others like them go on, from youth baseball to professional baseball and beyond. This journey is grueling and unforgiving, and begins from an early age. Baseball is make or break I think more so in the DR than anywhere else in the entire world. In a documentary called Road to the Big Leagues, Vladimir Guerrero had said that had baseball not worked out for him, he probably would have wound up an okra farmer back home. Many kids drop out of school around age 13 to pursue baseball full time. With around 1 in 3 Dominican citizens living below the poverty line, many hope to dedicate everything their mind, body, and soul has to offer in search of a better life for them and their families. Sadly, far too many players go through the more than unfortunate experience of just not making it and being stuck in their early 20s with little to no education and seemingly no way out. According to NBC, less than 2% of minor league recruits from the country go on to play Major League Baseball. The other 98% have to completely reassess their lives, and there aren't many options for them at that point. Baseball culture here is the textbook definition of high risk, high reward. While players do play the game with the hopes of bettering the lives of them and their loved ones, they also do it just because they love the game. Young players here live and breathe baseball. As Zach mentioned before, the sport is basically treated like religion. They look up to those whose footsteps they wish to follow in, these titans of the game, desperately wanting to become heroes themselves in their home country. There's absolutely no doubting the passion present in the Dominican's player base. One of the biggest goals of young Dominican players is to get into a baseball academy. Former Dominican-born minor leaguer and international scout Epi Guerrero is credited with starting the so-called Age of the Academy in his home country. Each Major League Baseball team has their own academy on the island, searching for the game's next big international superstars. This academy culture has given rise to a debate regarding its influence on the country's youth. On the one hand, it helps young lovers of the game develop their skills and gives them a better shot at making the Major Leagues, while paying them well beyond what it takes even their parents to make through years of hard labor. On the other hand, it's causing young boys to drop out of school at way too early an age, and leaves the many that don't go professional uneducated. It's also given rise to what are called buscones, independent talent scouts who can range from positive mentors to blood-sucking leeches. This culture debate is somewhat similar to the one we had in Japan. There are drawbacks to baseball culture here. There's a great story written by Ian Gordon from MotherJones.com that came out in 2013 talking about a young Dominican shortstop named Yuri Guillen, a young player who signed with the Nationals put through what Gordon calls the Dominican sweatshop system. On the day Guillen was supposed to leave for the United States to play in the Nationals organization, he passed away. The 16-year-old had gotten sick, was refused treatment because he didn't have insurance as his contract wasn't yet finalized, and couldn't afford the $1,300 admission fee. He got treatment from a more affordable provider, but by then it was just too late. It was a treatable disease that slipped through the cracks of a broken system. According to Gordon, there wasn't a single doctor or certified athletic trainer to help Guillen at the academy in the Dominican. The Nationals gave Guillen's family his signing bonus on the condition that they sign away their right to sue the team, but signing bonus or not, Guillen's mother and father had lost their son. Imagine if you were 16 years old, preparing to go to a different country without your family. These are huge life decisions that these kids are doing mostly to better the lives of their families. These kids almost have no other choice than to partake in this winner-take-all gauntlet with everything to gain and everything to lose. The Dominican Republic has become one of the most talent-filled countries in the world for baseball, and I have no doubt that they'll continue to output some of the game's best for years to come. With the good, though, of course comes the bad. A make-or-break mindset is one that almost all Dominican players need to adopt in order to have a chance at success, and most, unfortunately, do break. That concludes our discussion of baseball in the Dominican Republic. Now it is up to you guys to let us know where Zach and I should go next. Comment down below which of these two countries you'd like us to visit next in the series. Whichever country gets the most comments one week from today will be the next place that we visit. We really hope you enjoyed the video. Please do stay safe, and we'll see you next time.